During a time in America of engineering breakthroughs and overall enhancements in infrastructure and industry, many wonderful structures were built and many great feats were achieved. One of these breakthroughs was the development of the steel cable bridge design, specifically regarding the Brooklyn Bridge. The Brooklyn Bridge was originally devised by civil engineer John A. Roebling, who proposed the idea in 1857 and waited 12 years before it was approved. Unfortunately, John A. Roebling tragically passed away just a month later, leaving his son Washington to take over as chief engineer of the project. But through innovative design and hard labor, the Brooklyn Bridge was completed 14 years later on May 24, 1883. So, just how did the Brooklyn Bridge open new realms of engineering for the future of steel cable bridges and further affect American society in the late 19th century? Well, it was one of the most influential achievements for future uses of the steel cable bridge design, particularly because it was the beginning for more structurally sound and useful bridges. It also provided new, more efficient methods of transportation and more housing opportunities in surrounding areas, which contributed to the urbanization and growth of the population in both Manhattan and Brooklyn. Towards the late 19th century, America was a hub for industrialization and immigration, as well as a time of political reform, known as the Gilded Age. The Gilded Age was made up of flashy materialism and political corruption. It was a time when many old industries were expanding and when many new industries like petroleum, steel, and electrical power were surfacing. Coupled with industry was urbanization, a change that was instigated by the mass influx of immigrants coming from all over the world in hopes to start a new, successful life in America. An important figure of the Gilded Age was Andrew Carnegie, a man of entrepreneurship that revolutionized the steel industry. Like many other high-ranking businessmen of the time, Carnegie used many corrupt business practices. Common examples of these were seen through the exploitation of his immigrant workers and the union, and bribing government officials. Carnegie's steel company laid the foundation for the future of steel and its various uses. Among these uses, the renowned twisted steel cable design would be implemented in the creation of the Brooklyn Bridge. The Brooklyn Bridge linked Brooklyn and Manhattan, two of the most populated cities in the U.S., allowing for residents to safely commute over the East River. The bridge had a significant impact on New York City's transportation and urban planning, and offered a much-needed link that boosted the industrialization of New York City. What made the Brooklyn Bridge so influential was its first-time use of steel cable. It was John A. Roebling, a civil engineer originally from Germany, who would bring the idea into fruition through a significant amount of time and experimentation with small-scale steel cable bridges. Originally, most bridges were constructed using a weak, unreliable fiber rope, but when Roebling immigrated to the U.S. in 1831, he discovered a new trade for the steel cable. Roebling used a specific method to manufacture the steel wire through the Bessemer process, which involved blowing air through the molten iron to oxidize and remove impurities, resulting in a purer form of iron known as steel. And when solidified, it is rolled into wire rods and drawn out into wire. Roebling would be commissioned to build several more bridges and aqueducts using the steel cable design, which all led up to his final project, the Brooklyn Bridge. Work began in 1869 on the Brooklyn side of the East River when the wooden Kazan were sunk in towards bedrock. By mid-1876, the towers were up, and from there, the process of placing the main four steel cables between the two anchorages began in February 1877. Now what made the steel wire design so important was its tensile strength and durability. The Brooklyn Bridge utilized suspension and cable style type designs. The suspension bridge design portion utilized four main cables which are made up of 5,434 parallel steel wire arranged in 19 strands. Roebling spec for the main cable wire required number 8 Birmingham Gauge Gaveling Steel Wire. 0.165 inches in diameter, able to hold 3,400 pounds of tension before breaking. Ultimate strength of each cable is 11,200 tons. The diameter of each cable is 15 and a half inches. The project needed about 6.8 million pounds of steel wire. After the completion of the main cables, the suspending wires had to be put in place. These wires help hold up the deck. The following are some of the principal dimensions appertaining to the structure. The length of wire in four cables exclusive of wrapping wire is 14,301 miles. The length of each single wire in cables is 3,579 feet. The weight of the four cables inclusive of wrapping wire is 3,588 and a half tons. The deck portion was made of steel tusks suspended from the four main cables. Once the suspending cables were in place, steel cross beams were added from the anchorages. After more than 13 years and $25 million spent, the Brooklyn Bridge would officially open as the longest suspension bridge ever built on May 24, 1883.
The Brooklyn Bridge brought housing, transportation, and growth in surrounding areas, and by 1972, the population boomed to about 400,000 people. Before the Brooklyn Bridge was built, in 1884, Brooklyn had a population of 599,495. Today, Brooklyn's population is 2,018,356, and Manhattan's population, 2,284,103. Almost a million and a half home secrets have moved over the bridge into Brooklyn. Before the bridge, the only way to travel from New York to Brooklyn was by ferries. But once the bridge was complete, it quickly became an often used route for commercial and passenger transportation. The bridge led the population growth in the surrounding areas of Brooklyn and New York City. It allowed for people who lived in one city at the end of the East River to easily cross the bridge and commute to work in another city at the other side of the river. Now with four bridges across the East River, three of them between Brooklyn and Manhattan, it has been found necessary to divert all motor traffic. By far the heaviest of part of vehicular traffic to the other bridges, leaving the plank roadways of the Brooklyn Bridge open only to horse-drawn vehicles. The way that people commuted over the bridge was by horse-drawn vehicles. While motor vehicles had to take Manhattan Bridge or Williamsburg Bridge, both of these bridge designs were piggybacked off the idea of the steel cable style suspension using the Brooklyn Bridge. Thank you, Mr. Winkle, for taking your time today to talk to us about the origins of the Brooklyn Bridge. It's my pleasure to be here. First of all, can you tell me about your successes in your book, The Great Bridge, The Epic Story of the Building of the Brooklyn Bridge? Good thing you asked. I'm re-releasing the 40th anniversary edition on April 29th. Can you please elaborate on the materials that were utilized in the construction of the towers? Well, the towers are made up of a variety of stones like limestone, granite, and cement. Every piece of material was brought to the site by horse and wagon in 1869, just four years after the Civil War. Well, what other techniques were used to make the bridge? An interesting technique was the use of wooden casings that provided the foundation for the bridge's piers. This allowed the stone tower anchors to be planted deep into the river floor. It was techniques like these that led to the improved methods of construction in the future. Well, also, can you tell us about John Roebling? John Roebling was the mastermind behind the engineering of steel cable bridges. He theorized bridges could suspend off of steel cables. One of his first designs was the wooden aqueduct that spanned across the Allegheny River in Pennsylvania. Soon, Roebling had a vision to connect the two great cities of Manhattan and Brooklyn. This is where the Brooklyn Bridge comes in. Shortly after the construction of the bridge began, John Roebling passed away due to tetanus after his foot was crushed by a boat that ran into the dock. This left his son to take over, but his son was healing over life-threatening injuries, so his wife supervised operations. Can you tell us the reason why the Brooklyn Bridge was built? The Brooklyn Bridge influenced many future bridges in America. One example is the Golden Gate Bridge. The Golden Gate Bridge made a significant impact on the availability of transportation from the immigration stations to the surrounding areas. Well, thank you, Mr. Kalu. We really appreciate your time and effort to meet with you. Yeah, we really appreciate it. Thank you. Of course, anytime. To boost the economy of California, the rising city of San Francisco needed a way for residents to travel across the bay faster to get to their desired destination. The people of San Francisco relied on the use of ferry boats as a use of transportation and is now in change with the introduction of the Golden Gate Bridge. When people think of San Francisco, they think of the Golden Gate Bridge. Not only was the bridge a tourist attraction in its first years of completion, it was also a symbol of power and progress in the United States. It helped immigrants who have migrated for many new opportunities. To continue the idea of population growth in the Gilded Age, the reason for construction of the bridge was because San Francisco didn't have a permanent connection with neighboring communities, making the growth rate below the national average. The dream of connecting San Francisco to its neighboring communities healed the wound of the heavy loss of employment within the area despite the condition of the bridge and how it's over open water. Iconic bridges like the Golden Gate Bridge in San Francisco and the Reconstruction 6th Street Bridge in Los Angeles represents progress, connection, and opportunity in their cities by improving transportation and urbanization. In terms of population growth and urbanization, the project of reconstructing LA 6th Street Bridge, which connected downtown Los Angeles with Boyle Heights, created many more opportunities for the people of LA. With the help of previous examples like the Golden Gate Bridge and the Brooklyn Bridge on how they are landmark expressions to their cities, the beauty of bridges across LA always attracted the local population. They are widely used in props for Hollywood films, photo shoots, and car commercials, as in the concrete LA River channel they cross. The previous 6th Street Bridge, terribly deteriorating, made appearances in movies like Terminator 2 and Repo Man, but never got the recognition and symbolism like the Hollywood sign. The future of the bridge set Los Angeles into a more lively city. With its thousands of LED lights, the bridge is able to gain its iconic status that's able to energize a public space spanning the LA River and having cultural celebrations and gatherings. 
Urban expansion and the enhancement of transportations are the key components in the development of a city. Many amazing structures were created in America in the late 19th century. A period of technological growth and overall improvement in infrastructure and industry. The twisted steel cable would be used to build thousands of steel cable bridges. The first being the Brooklyn Bridge, which connected Brooklyn and Manhattan. The Brooklyn Bridge, completed in 1883, built by John A. Roebling, is the most famous example of this. The Brooklyn Bridge changed the way people and products were transported across the East River between Manhattan and Brooklyn. The Brooklyn Bridge's influence continues to be shown throughout the decades, with bridges like the Golden Gate Bridge and the Sixth Street Bridge, both of which utilize steel cable engineering. Bridges like these enhanced transit routes, provided new job opportunities, enabled greater economic development, and aided in the process of urbanization.